Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today. And it is then posted to our website for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recording are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So similar to your state library. And so we provide services and training and consulting and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So we have shows shows on Encompass Live from, for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, um, anything and everything. Really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. We sometimes have uh, Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on to do presentations for us. Let me just double check one thing here. And yeah, and we also do have guest speakers that come on. And today we have guest speaker for us. Uh, for those of you who are regular uh, viewers of the show, you know that the last Wednesday of the month is always pretty sweet tech day. Um, which is when our technology innovation librarian, Amanda Sweet, comes on the show to do presentations about something techie related. Um, so if you're a tech person at your library, this is the, the day to always be here. Um, as you can tell, this is not Amanda uh, here with us today. Amanda is actually attending the Computers in Libraries conference in Washington, D.C. this week. So she is unable to join us in herself, um, but that's okay. We have got Eric Button from the St. Louis County Library. Um, to join us to do a presentation on the Grand Pads uh, program that they have at their library. And this is a session that actually came from Amanda as well from the Internet Librarian Conference that was held um, last fall in uh, Monterey, California. Um, and um, Amanda said she had seen your presentation, Eric, and said it would be, thought it was great and wanted to have you on the show. So we are happy to have you here to tell us all about this awesome program you have going. Thank you, Krista. I appreciate the invitation and, and thanks to Michelle also. I'm glad she enjoyed or found the presentation to be of interest. It will be presented back in California. Um, I'm just going to uh, uh, share some background about our project. And uh, I want to start by just giving you an idea of who we are as a library system to give you an idea of how we accomplish this. Um, we are uh, there we go. Um, we are uh, the largest library in Missouri. Uh, we serve about 860,000 people in our service population. Um, we have 20 branch locations and we serve uh, the community with five bookmobiles as well. We're primarily a suburban area. Um, we're just outside of the city of St. Louis, kind of surrounds the city of St. Louis. Um, and we have a, a generous budget. It's $58 million uh, that we operate on. Last year was a very significant year for us and an exciting one in many ways. Um, mm. It was our 75th anniversary year. Oh, since nice. Establishment. Um, and we also had a couple of uh, great acknowledgments from uh, our peers. One of them was uh, we won the National Medal from the IMLS. That. Uh, yes, congratulations. Institute of Entertainment <laughs> Library Services. And uh, we are very excited about that. And that had uh, a lot to do with our service responses during the COVID years, including the Grand Pad Project. We mm -hmm. also won uh, the Missouri Library of the Year from the Missouri Library Association last year. So last year was a good, a good year for us. Um, the, the so your library, you said it surrounds St. Louis. So St. Louis, the city itself, has its own library system? That's correct. Ah, OK. That's correct. Yeah, we are we are separate systems. However, uh, about this time last year, we merged our catalogs and our patron databases. So we share a catalog and share resources. So we are kind of in a quasi consortial arrangement with uh -huh. them. Uh -huh. And we share our ILS. 
Sounds like a good idea, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so our collections doubled in size and mm -hmm. it's been a great benefit to our patrons since we made mm -hmm. that change. But our story on the grand pads really began as a result of the pandemic. And during the pandemic, we all know that a lot of things changed very quickly. And it was just about three years ago, right, right from now, that yeah. most of this came down. Um, it's hard to believe that it's actually been three years. Three years still, um, yeah. But we, uh, Businesses shut down, the library closed. Uh, we began providing some alt alternate services um, and people were encouraged to stay home and stay isolated. They were told to stay apart from one another. You couldn't visit your family. You couldn't visit people in nursing homes. Um, eventually during that time, our work uh, at libraries moved online or we found alternate ways to do that. We had our social meetings via Zoom, um, but there was a group of people that were particularly left behind in that time, and that was seniors, mm -hmm. because seniors were not as apt to uh, move over and begin using Zoom because they just didn't understand it. They weren't comfortable with it. They didn't have the technology they needed to do that. So we were all isolated, but they were particularly isolated during that time. We had a number of different responses uh, to provide services to our community during the pandemic. Uh, during the pandemic, we distributed over 2 million meals to children and families. We also distributed thousands of diapers, uh, flow kits, COVID test kits. We provided vaccines. Um, we had uh, eye clinics for children. Um, a, lot of our, a lot of our services focused specifically on services and responses to students and children. For example, we received some CARES Act money that provided for 10,000 hotspots to be distributed in our community, along with 6,000 Chromebooks. We also distributed several hundred PBS Playtime learning pads to preschool students. Um, during those, those early months, we had some conversations, uh, our director had some conversations with the Older Adults Commission in the St. Louis area, and that led to more discussion about the needs that seniors had because we felt like a lot of our services and responses were directed towards students, but we had not necessarily given the same attention to the needs of seniors. So with the next round of CARES Act funding, we were able to prepare a proposal um, to serve seniors and that was a, a $1 million grant that we received um, to do so. So we, we went out and started looking at what some of our options would be to provide a technology uh, solution for seniors that would help them deal with isolation and uh, the loneliness that they were experiencing. We looked at, we looked at laptops um, as, as one option and Chromebooks, and they obviously offer quite a few features and um, have a great computing power, but they also have a fairly high learning curve for seniors who were either completely inexperienced with technology or perhaps intimidated by technology. Also, if you don't have a device with a built-in um, uh, cell service, then you have mm -hmm. to have some other means of accessing the internet, whether it's Wi-Fi, a hotspot, or some other option. We also looked at cell phones as a possibility, and, and we liked some things about cell phones. They were very easy to carry and easy to hold. Um, they offer good functionality. Uh, and cell service is generally affordable. Um, but one of the things that we thought about in terms of seniors was that using a cell phone is, is visually challenging. It's small to begin mm -hmm. with. Um, and I, I, for one, am still trying to figure out all of the features on my cell phone, and I consider myself oh. a pretty regular user. So I knowing, don't use everything that's on here, no. <laughs> right. Putting, putting a cell phone into the hands of seniors is... Uh, is probably an intimidating thing for most of them. We also looked at tablets as another means of uh, meeting this need. And tablets blended the two uh, solutions together. They, they, they still were portable and easier to hold, but they offered a little bit better visibility. Um, however, most tablets still require quite a bit of computer knowledge or technology to be able to use them effectively. So we started some conversations with people in our community about this issue and one of our partners said, have you heard about GrandPad? We said, no, we haven't heard about GrandPad. So we went and did some research and um, began exploring their website 
and realized that this might be a really good solution for us for this grant. Grant pads are designed uh, by and for um, older adults. They actually use uh, a, a senior uh, advisory council that's made up of people who are 75 and older to, uh, to design and, and guide their, uh, their designs on the tablet. Um, they also are built to be very simple and intuitive. As you can see from the image on the screen, it's not terribly complex. Mm -hmm. And that was something that we were looking for. They also offer a great degree of accessibility. Um, that includes screens that um, can be increased in size. Uh, they also have features on most screens that allow you to turn up or down the volume very easily. So if a person is hard of hearing, they can uh, increase the volume quickly. Uh, and the, the, the grand pad functions as both a touch screen and it can be used with a stylus. So oftentimes seniors have uh, dexterity issues with their hands mm -hmm. and having a couple different ways for them to interact with the screen is, is beneficial. One of the things that they thought about too was this wireless charging stand that you see in the picture. Um, all of us struggle at times to get our, our charging cord into that little slot. And that can be particularly challenging for people who, uh, who struggle with the use of uh, their, their fine motor skills with their fingers. Um, the grand pads also come with cellular service integrated into the device, which is um, something that was very appealing to us because we knew that there was a percentage of our uh, user base that didn't have access to Wi-Fi in their homes. The devices are highly customizable. Um, in, in the program, the way it's set up, uh, you're assigned a family administrator and your family administrator has controls to allow you to add and remove things. Um, and they can also have some power to uh, help you utilize the device. Um, so that's one of the benefits. It's also um, a, a safe, secure environment and by this, I mean that they come with the ability to lock down the internet to keep seniors from going off into directions that would get them into trouble or get them caught up in a scam or a scheme. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some built-in safeguards with that. I also forgot to mention that these devices are managed devices. So the library can add content to them at any time. And we have done that quite frequently as I'll talk about some of those projects a little later on. Um, and probably the greatest thing that we think um, is the, the benefit of grant pads is their customer support, their user support. Um, they offer live human support 24-7, 365. So no matter what time you call, you're always going to get a person. And all, all you have to do is click one of these buttons on the screen that says help, and you'll immediately be connected to your, uh, your assigned agent. Um, this was very important because we did not have the capacity to take calls from people and answer their calls and spend hours of time on the phone with seniors who are learning technology. So having that present was important. Um, the GrandPad is also a subscription-based model, which means that anything that happens to the GrandPad, uh, breakage, or um, something just goes wrong and it needs to be replaced, it's covered and the senior doesn't have to worry about um, having to replace that. The grand pad has a lot of great content for seniors and some very interesting features that I'll go through quickly here. Um, one of the things that is very appealing about the grand pad model is that when a senior gets the device, it comes with an email account loaded for them. We've all, uh, any of us who've worked in libraries have all experienced the sometimes the painful process of trying to get people signed up for an email account who is who have never used one before and don't know how to do so. It can take a lot of time. The grand pad comes and they already have an account set up, which is a huge benefit. The grand pad offers both phone and video calling and it's integrated in so a senior only has to hit one button to jump into a video call. It makes it very easy for them to do so. They also have Zoom calling integrated into uh, their, their product, 
And that was one of the things that they enhanced during the pandemic because they realized that this was something that people were going to be expecting in the product. And so they, they developed that. So it is neatly integrated and it's very, very easy for seniors to use Zoom um, to attend any meetings that they're invited to. The GrandPad also offers music and radio stations that are linked directly to it. Um, the music is some of the music that you might expect older generations would be uh, drawn to. And the radio stations come with some built-in radio stations and you can also add stations that you want um, to the device. So we added several of our local stations. So our, our GrandPad users just have to click a button to get connected to the live stream of a variety of different uh, radio stations in the St. Louis area. Mm. Um, there's also news and weather offered, and that includes uh, weather both where they live and they can track their weather uh, wherever their loved ones live. My mm. mom is kind of a weather nut and she's always following what's happening in our weather, even though she lives in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom always calls me when we have a blizzard or something. She lives in New York and she's like, How'd, what'd you get? What'd you get? <laughs> Yes, I, I think um, our our parents and grandparents have a, an interesting obsession with what's going on where we live. So um, they can track the weather in a number of different places through this. There's also a number of games that are offered on the tablet. And uh, the games um, include some very simple things like solitaire and bridge, but there are also some interactive games that they can play with one another. Uh, there's both... Um, a front and a rear camera on here. So uh, on the, the rear camera, they can, or the, I, yeah, the rear camera, they can take pictures and send pictures to their loved ones um, through through the grand pad. And uh, they can obviously use the, the, the front facing camera for uh, the, the video calls that they use in the zooms. Um, and then another thing that's interesting about grand pad is that the access to the internet is scalable, as I kind of talked about a little bit before. Um, you can lock it down as much as you want, or you can open it up as much as you want. Um, so if you have a, a grandparent that your concern is going to be drawn into some kind of trouble or um, some kind of a scam, you can limit where they can go as a family administrator. As a mm -hmm. library, uh, we made a decision to open up the access to anything on the internet because we didn't want people to run into any blocks um, with, with the devices that we were issuing. And then I mentioned the help. Um, one of the things I didn't say about the help before is that, uh, as you can see in this picture on the screen here, each person has, each GrandPad user has a specific support person that is assigned to their account. And so, if they're calling while that person is on duty, they will always talk to that person. Um, if they are calling when that person is not on duty, they'll talk to another live person who, who they will also see a picture of. And um, all of these people are specially trained to work with seniors and people who are not as familiar with technology. So they're very patient. Um, they're all US based, which is something that's important for a lot of our senior users as well. And then there's a companion app that allows uh, us, the loved ones of a GrandPad user, to load an app onto our phone or our tablet and share content with them very easily and have video calls with them. Uh, so that's something that is offered through GrandPad as well. The, the grant pad itself is not a powerhouse machine. This is not something that you're buying to do high, high speed uh, gaming. Um, this is a, a device that's very adequate for its purpose. And the specs are listed here on the screen. And uh, we've never had anyone tell us that they were unable to do something because of any hardware limitations on the device. Um, it is an Acer tablet. And uh, if anything does go wrong with the tablet, it's insured and GrandPad would replace it for the, the user. So obviously we had a million dollars for this project and we had to determine who was going to get a GrandPad. We anticipated that the, uh, that the demand would be higher than um, the supply and we had 
initially 1,500 devices. Later, we added another 1,500, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, so we had a total of 3,000 devices, but we, we set up an application process that it included a Google form where we collected information about the applicants. And we were looking for things like your income and your age. And do you have internet access at home? Do you already own an internet device? Um, are you living by yourself? Are you living in a community living arrangement? Um, and each of the answers to those questions generated a score. And that scoring matrix is how we determined which of our applicants received a grant pad. Um, the higher the score, the more likely you were to receive a grant pad. We did have a couple of basic requirements based on the funding. One of them was that the, the applicant had to be a resident of St. Louis County. And we made a requirement that the person also had to be a card holder at, at the uh, county library. Sure. As, re, as a result of that, we actually uh, issued 1,300 new cards for people that nice. applied who had never had a library card with us before. So that was a great secondary outcome of the project. Many of those people did indeed get a grand pad, but some of them may not have gotten a grand pad, but they still got a library card, which is beneficial for them. Mm -hmm. uh, what, so the scoring the matrix, how did that work? Was it like if they had the needier they were, the higher they the points were? Or like, like if they didn't have internet, didn't have device access, would that bump them up higher? Is that how it was? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. like for example, um, if you had the lowest income category, your score would have been a plus three on that on that rating. If you made a hundred thousand dollars, you would have been a minus two. So all of these factors were weighted differently, mm -hmm. and they were incremental. So if if you had internet access, but you didn't have a device, you got points against you for having internet access, but you gained points in your score for not having a device. Um, so all of those things work together to give them an overall score. Um, one of the most common questions we got from people when we talked about our project was, uh, how, if this was an, a Google form, an internet-based application, how did seniors fill it out if they didn't have internet access and they didn't have a device? Mm. And, um, what The way we worked around that was that oftentimes people that were filling it out were a loved one of, of the GrandPad user or applicant. Um, that might be a child or um, a, a relative or friend that did have access, or um, they could give us a call and we filled out the application on their behalf through our call center. So we took a number of uh, applications over the phone as well. So regardless of, of a person's individual situation, we always had a means of them being able to apply. Um, in addition to the requirements that I mentioned already, we also had a requirement that you had to be at least 65 years of age to be considered for the device. So anyone that was below age 65 was, was automatically disqualified and not even considered regardless of how their scoring would have worked out. Because this was a project that was intended for older adults. I don't know if there are any questions, but please feel free to jump in if you have questions, and I'd be happy to answer them either now or uh, at the end. Mm -hmm. um, there's one question that came in that you might talk about later, but I'll just um, ask it now since I want to make sure that, you know, well, another question that had come in that I hadn't gotten to yet, sorry. <laughs> um, so I want to know, um, have you had seniors schedule appointments with library staff to help use these? Um, you said there's the help that comes with them, but um, or is that something you're going to be getting into in your presentation? Yeah, good question. Um, we have not scheduled specific uh, appointments. We do have a service that our lab trainers offer called Book a Trainer, and um, that is something where we offer one-on-one -on -one individualized attention for tech questions and needs. But um, for the GrandPad users, they occasionally would call our our customer connect, our call center, and ask some questions. But most of the time, they just turn to the GrandPad. Uh, representatives and they got great assistance from their mm -hmm. grant pad built-in help on the device okay yeah. great yeah um, so 
this was all done during the pandemic, of course. So we had some interesting obstacles to work around because we weren't fully open at that time for library services. And we were also trying to be um, aware of <clears throat> the uh, just the health concerns that people had. So when we did our first distribution, we decided that we would, uh, well, before I get to the distribution, I should probably talk about the, the data entry and collection because one of the challenges we had was that especially in our first round of, of applications, our data was very messy. We realized that we needed to do more locking down of the form, more data validation, um, breaking out the address field into multiple different questions instead of making it one. Um, so we had a lot of cleanup that we had to do with the data in order to begin working with it initially. Um, we also knew that uh, one of the challenges was going to be that we were working with an audience, a target audience here that was either unfamiliar with technology or in some cases right out just adverse to technology, scared of technology. And so um, we had to often work through the family administrator or the app, the uh, other person that applied on behalf of the grant pad applicant to, uh, to get through this work. And because all of our communication at this scale had to be done through email. Many of our GrandPad applicants did not have an email address until after they got their GrandPad. So in order to communicate, we had to go through the family administrator that put their name down on the application and gave us their email address. And we found out that in some cases, the family administrator had applied on behalf of an applicant but they didn't tell the applicant that they had applied yeah. or just the opposite where the prospective user applied and put someone down as a family administrator and didn't tell that person. So <laughs> when we sent emails, sometimes we get confusion back because people would have no idea what we were talking about. They didn't know that someone had listed them on their application as a family administrator. So those were some of the things that we didn't anticipate. We learned some lessons. Um, and oops, sorry, it's a slide. Learn some lessons and uh, uh, would do it differently in the second phase. Um, the distribution was uh, interesting to say the least. Uh, the picture here on the left, you see we had a massive line of cars at our headquarters location. And in our garage, in the upper right uh, picture, you see 1,500 grand pads lined up on tables in the garage. We had a four hour window on a Sunday when we were closed and we anticipated that we'd have a thousand people come and pick up and we thought we could handle that. Well, it turns out we were wrong. <laughs> uh, I think every GrandPad user came that day and <laughs> or tried to come that day and we created such a traffic hazard that the police had to show up and basically shut down the operation because we had uh, traffic backed up on every road and highway within about a half mile of the library. And it was um, quite a scene. Uh, lesson learned, don't do it that way with mass distribution. <laughs> um, but we were trying to do drive through so that people could uh, pick up without having to go inside mm -hmm. or without having to have any exposure to a lot of people. Um, we did end up distributing 700 devices that day through our drive through um, but we had 800 then that we had to distribute later on. And we decided to do that through uh, surveying our GrandPad recipients and asking them which branch they'd like to pick up the GrandPad at. And then we sent GrandPads out to any of our 20 locations for pickup. And then they picked up the GrandPads from those locations a couple weeks later. Um, we also had a second phase of GrandPads. We were fortunate enough to receive some ARPA funds through our county to not only um, fund a second year of the first phase, but also to expand it to include another 1,500 users. So we had a total of 3,000 grant pad users um, that were issued grant pads uh, in phase two. Um, and so we did another application process. We, of course, applied all of the lessons learned from the first time and we also did a tremendous amount of work in marketing uh, the program this time because we heard from some of our elected officials that 
some of their constituents did not know about the program the first time, despite our best efforts. And um, we we went ahead and uh, just blasted the, the opportunity everywhere we could think of. We worked through our partners, our partners shared the message, and we ended up uh, with more than 2,200 applications for the 1,500 devices that we were going to be issuing. Um, so we felt like we did a good job of, of reaching people this time. Uh, and because of the lessons learned with the drive-through pickup, we this time had all of the uh, grand pads sent directly to our branches for pickup. And part of the application that they filled out was indicating which branch they wanted to pick the device up at. So we, we streamlined our workflow considerably after uh, our initial experiences. One of the things that's great about GrandPads is that there's a lot of uh, good data that you can collect through the GrandPad uh, reporting system that they have built into uh, to the uh, system. And uh, I'm gonna show you some examples of some of the data that we can get through our GrandPad uh, engagement reports that they provide for us. Uh, this particular slide includes data just from our phase one users because at the time we ran this report, our phase two users had not had their devices long enough to give a, a good representative sample of what this would look like. So for our first 1500 users, um, their average use per week was five hours per week, which I think is pretty good. Now, probably most of us spend maybe five hours per day on our phones um, or on some kind of computer or technology device. But for seniors who may not have ever picked up any kind of tablet, phone, computer, five hours a week was a pretty good, pretty good result, we felt. And um, they had lots of clicks uh, every week, tw almost 2,500 clicks per user per week, which means they were moving around on their grand pad frequently and doing a lot of different things on it. And they had uh, 5.9 companions uh, per user. So that meant that each GrandPad user had that many people in their trusted list of contacts that, that could uh, send them emails and receive emails. And I, I may have skipped that over, but one of the great security features of the GrandPad is that you can only receive an email from someone who is in your trusted list of contacts. So you will not get spam, you will not get junk mail, you won't get mail from anyone else that you don't want to hear from. Only people that you put into your contacts list can send you emails. So that's another way that the security features are um, present on the device and protect seniors. This is a look at the overall patron engagement. Um, and you can see some of the figures here. I mean, they've, they've participated in 4,500 Zoom calls over 3,000 outgoing video chats. Those are calls that they made to someone else with a video chat. Um, they've uh, uh, compiled over 300,000 hours of use. And again, this is just for those phase one users. Um, so it's been very successful in terms of its usage and its impact. Uh, and then this slide has some of the data about the time that they spend that GrandPad spends working with um, the, uh, the, the users. So they spent 456 hours of time working directly with the GrandPad users. Now that's 456 hours of time that library staff doesn't have to spend working with these users. So that's significant to us in all of these calls and, and other work that GrandPad's performing as part of the service that we are paying for. Now, outcomes, stories. We've got a lot of great stories, and there's a few comments here on, on uh, this particular slide that you can see. Um, it's not uncommon at all to receive these kind of life-changing stories where people just felt like their, their world became whole again because they could um, interact with their family once again and uh, um, share pictures and experiences, and that's something that they desperately missed during the pandemic. Um, and uh, there, there are just so many, so many cool stories that we've received that um, this one is uh, just one testimony that someone sent to us 
and I'll give you just a moment to read that over. I was going to, I was thinking about that when you mentioned the games that were on there, what he said there, I believe it helped him keep his mind sharp. That is something that, you know, studies are shown playing those kind of games. It does keep your hand, your brain and, um, and your dexterity too, without, if you're tapping certain things on the screen. Absolutely. Yeah, that is most certainly true. So we receive these kinds of uh, comments, stories, testimonials all the time. Uh, in fact, we have received some people who have left us voicemails calling from their grandpad where they've left us a singing telegram, essentially. Oh. Um, this, one lady, this one lady made up her own song and called <laughs> us and it was like, thank you, thank you so much. And <laughs> it was really sweet and it's just kind of fun when we get those, those um, reports back from people. That's awesome. So kind of uh, wrapping up what we've learned from this, uh, some of these I've talked about already, but obviously working with older adults who aren't tech savvy can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we experienced because of the scale of our project was just the amount of work and time that it required to manage 3000 devices. Sure. If you were doing this on a much smaller scale, like if you had 25 or 50 devices, it would be a much, much simpler project than trying to uh, uh, manage it at the 3,000. Uh, but this can be scaled down to any, I mean, the the um, the company that does this, Grandpad, they'll, they they will do any size of library? I mean, yes, yes, they would, they would work with whatever scale um, project you have. And they work with individual consumers. That's their, that's one of their primary audiences is they sell directly to individuals um, uh -huh. both on their website and through Amazon. Um, we learned that single site distribution didn't work because the volume was too great. Uh, we, we learned to reduce our steps wherever possible um, and to be prepared for messy data. Even when we tightened up our forms and did a lot of data validation, we still had some things that required a little extra time and attention. Uh, we also learned that uh, there will be uh, some devices that are returned early. Um, that happens for a variety of reasons. Uh, in some cases, unfortunately, the individuals have passed away. And mm -hmm. so uh, we get those devices back from their loved ones. In other cases, uh, which is a much happier story, uh, people get comfortable enough with technology that they want to step up and they want to move mm -hmm. to the iPad or another uh, device mm -hmm. that um, gives them more features uh, because they've gained that much confidence from using the grandpad that they're they're not as intimidated by technology any longer. Um, we also expect that some devices will not be returned. Um, so that is something that we're planning for. Uh, and we have learned too that managing the data is an important step and something that we have to be uh, really attentive to. In, in, so we're looking at, we're currently setting up Airtable, which is a product that some of you might have heard of or mm -hmm. actually be using. Um, it, it is a uh, uh, it's going to replace all of our various Google Sheets that we've been maintaining uh, since we started the project. Um, now, what's next? Uh, we're we're still we're still using the uh, GrandPad as an outreach tool, and we've done a number of things with the GrandPad through that, including sharing vaccine and COVID information from our county health department through the device. Um, we've also promoted library content. Uh, on on the GrandPad that includes uh, programs, virtual programs, which have been attended by quite a few of our GrandPad recipients, and um, uh, eBooks and other other types of library content that people can access. Uh, also, OverDrive became very interested in this project and began development of their own products to integrate more easily with with the GrandPad tablet. So, um, mm -hmm. those are some of the things that are happening as next steps something even simpler than what you have we have to use right now for we have we have an overdrive group in nebraska and i know um previous incarnation of it was a little difficult everyone loves libby the next one but so this would be even more simplified than that i suppose <laughs> yeah i think they were trying to make it very very easy for for seniors to use um we also are looking at potential funding sources because um 
as a subscription. That was a question service. I had because you'd mentioned um, uh, the grants that you got to get this started, but what about for continuing? Yes, we did correct, that. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, um, in order to continue the project with all of the tablets staying in in the field, we'd have to have a two million dollars a year, and we don't anticipate getting two million dollars a year for this project. So. We're looking at other funding sources that would allow us to keep some portion of the devices uh, deployed um, and keep those subscriptions active. So one of the partners that we're working with currently is the Health Communication Research Laboratory, which is associated with Washington University, which is in St. Louis. And um, they approached us because they have a project called I Heard, and um, I Heard is meant to, it, it actually came out of the COVID era and it's meant to uh, address the um, incorrect health information that people have heard. Um, mm. Things maybe about COVID or the monkeypox or whatever the latest health concern is. And they find out what people are hearing and then they send out uh, correct information through trusted sources like the library. Um, so, uh, mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so they were interested in partnering with us as a trusted uh, partner for getting that message out. And then that led to another conversation about using the grand pads to uh, survey seniors to find out what their interests are. So we're currently working through a project right now with them where we're, we're sending them a weekly survey to find out what interests they have. And then we're sending them something that's called Discover and discover is a list of, of opportunities in the community that exist that they might be interested in attending based on the interest that they indicated on the survey. And all of that is being distributed to our users through the grant pad. Part of that survey was asking them some questions about their grant pad, and I've included those stats here on, the, on this slide. And I think these stats are very telling, particularly the fact that 97% of our current users would recommend the grand pad to others. I think that's a um, pretty telling stat. Um, and there's a possibility that uh, this, this unit of Washington University will be able to secure grant funding for us to keep some of the grand pads in the field and allow them to continue doing this survey work with our seniors. We are also looking at another possible funding source through our Area Agency on Aging. Some of you may have triple A's uh, in your communities. Uh, ours has been renamed Aging Ahead. And we've been partnering with Aging Ahead for programming for some time now. We have a program called Choice uh, that, is that is presented um, both in person and virtually. And we are going to be piloting a concept that's a virtual senior center. And mm -hmm. Aging Ahead has come to us and said, people aren't coming to our brick and mortar senior centers any longer. Mm -hmm. um, the attendance has dropped off quite a bit because I think people that are in their 60s, 70s think that senior centers are for old people. And I'm not an old person. I don't go to the <laughs> senior center. And, and so they're struggling to, uh, to get people to come and use their services. And so we're working with them on a pilot that will use the grand pad to present programming and have a meal delivered to their home. And the programming will be done virtually, but it will be live programming so they can interact with people directly through these programs. And they'll be offered at least once per week and perhaps twice per week. And the funding that they write into that program will help us pay part of the expense of the grand pad subscription. So we're very interested in seeing where this will go. And we're hopeful that it might become a model for the uh, area agencies on aging throughout the country to utilize um, in the future. So that's an exciting possibility. Uh, we have a few other things out there floating about, but we are pretty realistic that we don't expect to have $2 million a year to throw toward this project, but we're hopeful that we'll have some amount of money that will allow us to keep some subset of those devices still out there um, for our seniors to use. 
And then the mm -hmm. final option that people have is that if they have used their grand pad over the last year or two, and they've fallen in love with it so much that they don't want to lose it, they do have an option of taking it over themselves. And they wouldn't have to surrender their grand pad. They could just start paying the bill um, themselves and, and grand pad will transfer over the, the ownership of that, that bill over to that individual user. So that is an option that we will be presenting to our, to our grand pad users. So that's what the future looks like. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Um, yes, great. We do have some questions that have come in. Um, I'll just remind everyone, if you do have any questions, just go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. I'm monitoring that here. That's where I've been pulling all these questions from. Um, we have plenty of time. We have, um, it's 10 minutes before the top of the hour, but um, we started a little late, so we'll go as long as it takes for everyone to get their questions answered and for Eric to share everything he wants to with us. Um, I think this is an, this is an awesome program, definitely. And you're right, you know, the some of these seniors were already possibly isolated before even the pandemic, just like everything. Things we all knew at libraries that were going on with people don't have the devices, they don't have everybody doesn't have the internet connection. Um, we knew it, and now everybody knows it. <laughs> and so now we're finally getting these, you know, issues taken care of. Um, so. Uh, in the previous slide, you were talking, I think a couple of slides ago, about how they were using their grand pad so much, the, the statistics, um, how many, you know, using it every day or, and definitely recommend it to somebody. Uh, and I think that's that's an interesting thing too, as well, you know, we, we talked at the beginning and people always say and assume, seniors do not know how to use these devices, they're not comfortable with them, but just getting it in their hands makes a huge difference. Um, my mother, she, she's 74 and, before the pandemic, she started using an iPad. She got one, uh, I think it was a get one free with your cell phone renewal type deal. And she is, she lives on it now. Yeah, she, once she got used to it, it was, it is like her, she has used it way more than those five hours a week now. <laughs> um, and sure. she does Zoom, they did, they, she has a book club and they switched it to a Zoom book club so that be, during the pandemic, and they sometimes still do that. She lives in upstate New York, so they get winter weather. If it's just bad weather, we don't have to skip doing our our thing. We can zoom right into each other and still have this connection, this book club that we do. So um, I think see, I was very surprised and impressed with what she did. How <laughs> she's just jumped right onto this. But I think they're yeah. they're afraid. But as soon as they get it in their hands, it it's, right. it's that scary. That initial hurdle of just getting over the fear. Yeah. Crippling for many of our older adults. Mm -hmm. um so um let's see so this this was that uh, you were talking about they can take over the subscription themselves so this was free to everyone to the seniors right this is there's no cost to them when it came comes to the library correct it was fully funded through the grant funds that we received from the cares act and arpa the cares act first year and then arpa second year yep um and and just to clarify too for people who were like here in Nebraska, it's much smaller library systems than yours or elsewhere too. Two million dollars a year is for three thousand subscriptions, right? You have three thousand right. now, right? So you haven't got above that three thousand devices. All right, so, so that, yeah, so that keep that in mind when you're thinking about hearing about the cost of this. <laughs> yeah, it's about six hundred fifty dollars per device per year. Okay, that was a question too. Okay. Um, and I was also looking, you said about them taking over. Yeah, I was looking at the GrandPad website that if they do an annual, if you do an individual annual subscription, like you said, the, the person taking over themselves, um, yeah, they can do an annual subscription and get a discount on it. And um, yeah, there's all sorts of deals and stuff. So yeah, take a look at the website. We have it linked off of the session page and I'll show it when we get back to that. Um, so who is this, the company that is doing this, this grand pad? You said it's um, by and for done, uh, they have an advisory team. So this is just uh, grand, I just looked up, it's just grandpad.net. And where do where do they come from? Do you know, <laughs> like their history? I do. Uh, and they, they are, they are a family, I think it's a family owned uh, business. It is not owned by any holding enterprise or anything like that at this point. Um, <laughs> it started because uh, the, the CEO 
uh, Scott Lean, uh, had a grandmother who was feeling disconnected and having trouble staying up with people and things. And so they were looking for a solution and they came up with this plan. And then the company grew from a uh, very small company into a company, I think he said they have 200 people working there now, uh, but it is still a private company. It's uh, not part of any other tech companies. So GrandPad is the company. And yeah, and here's the, I just switched to sharing my screen to show you all the, and we have this linked off the event session page too. And um, yeah, they have here their, interesting when you go to About Us, the first thing that comes up is their advisors. You said they had their seniors that are the advisors. And that comes up first, really showing this is who we are all about. And after that is the actual company people. So I like that. <laughs> Uh, all right, so um, so you were talking about having um, the issues with people who uh, a loved one or caregiver signed up for the senior using it or the senior didn't, didn't tell the person. And someone wanted to know, so is there only one email address per device or could there be more than one associated with it? So like the the, the the user's email address and then whoever might be helping them with it. Right, there's only one email address that's actually, this is, this. sorry, I should have shown this early. There's only one email address that's on this device. Okay. Um, and that is the user's email. However, we collected email addresses for the family administrator and have have that information in our contacts and GrandPad has that information as well. So they have the ability to reach out to either the user, the tablet user, or the family administrator's email. Um, but you wouldn't have two email addresses tied to one device, because this device is particular to a single user. That makes sense. But like behind the scenes, there's more than one person that can be said here, make sure so-and-so also gets all the info and keeps up with things, yeah. Um, so then um, one last uh, kind of set of questions we have here, um, but if anybody has anything else you want to ask, definitely get into the question section. As I said, we'll go as long as it takes to get all your questions answered. Um, so how, how did the checkout process for this work? I know you talked about them coming and picking them up and all that, but more specifically asking about, um, so this was like just like a permanent checkout device to one person with no like, um, like return date it's not like checking out a book or something else you have to return to the library and then someone else gets it is it is 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 that true is it just permanently assigned to that one particular person for the the life of the device or the however that person wants it not for the life uh, it's not permanent it's it was checked out to them for initially the 12 month period okay and uh when they were issued the device the recipient understood that this was a 12 month uh, check out and that at that time we didn't know that we were going to get an extension to go into a second year right so, you, you um, could only pay for it for what the first the first cares act grant covered right yeah. so the initial expectation was that they could keep it for 12 months and then they'd return it because that was the setup of the program um, it's the way grand pads work is uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't use a grand pad and check it out for two weeks to a person, as an example, um, because you have to take the device and wipe the, the data off of it and set up the new user account each time you give it to a different person. You can do that, but there's a lot of work involved in doing that. And so the short-term usage isn't really a model that applies with this. You know, we all, uh, many of us probably check out Chromebooks or maybe laptops or something like that to our communities. Those are easier to manage to check out for a couple of weeks at a time. Um, the GrandPad, because it is so closely tied to an individual user and an email account and contacts, uh, you, you wouldn't use that service model 
you would you would at least have it checked out for a period of probably a few months as as a minimum i would say a minimum yeah so it's a personal the thing for it's personal yeah to that person yeah and we do actually have it checked out on their library card um and sure. when these devices are ending uh their subscription we'll be having the devices due about a month and a half after the subscription ends so that people can keep it for the full time that the subscription is active and then mm -hmm. have more than a month to get it back to us so they're not mm -hmm. worried about being late or anything like that they can they can keep it the full time and then bring it back afterwards cool um all right um I don't see any other new questions that came in. That's that's fine. Um, I'm, I wrote down about that uh, the Health Communication Research Laboratory. That's very interesting too. I'm going to look more into that just to see what kind of things they are doing. That I heard program um, that is a, a, a definitely an issue, and um, just for everybody <laughs> that uh, there's lots of false information floating around there, and sometimes people just don't know to research something more deeply. Um, they'll just see something on their computer, on their tablet, on their grandpad, and say, oh, that must be it. Um, so I'm glad that that might be something that would get um, matched up with this program. All right. I don't see any other, yeah, as I said, any other last minute desperate questions coming in. So I think we will wrap things up for this morning. Um, thank you so much, Eric. This is, this is great. Um, Great program. I hope more libraries do um, participate in this, or at least maybe share this. In, if, if the library themselves can't do it, share this as something for your um, seniors in your community that is something they can get themselves if they are um, struggling or need a device um, or internet that they can um, use this uh, program as well. We got some thank yous coming in on the chat too. So. Thank you so much. So, and thank you everybody for being here today. Um, as I said, this is the link, this is the website for the GramPads program. If you want to know more and reach out to them, we do have it linked off of the session page for today's show. I've got that right in there. So um, if you go to our website and look up this, you'll find that link there as well. Um, and it will be there when we do the archive recording of this as well. So. That will wrap it up today's show. As I just said, the show is being recorded. And if you go to our main Encompass Live page, if you use your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, it's the only thing that will come up. So nobody else is allowed to use that name. <laughs> um, and you'll get to our upcoming shows. But then over here on the, on the bottom underneath there is archived shows. This is uh, the most recent one will be at the top here. Uh, today's recording will be available um, by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, as long as uh, our uh, go-to webinar and YouTube, we post all of our recordings to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel. Um, and then Eric, if you're willing to share your slides, um, I'll we'll include those. As, yeah, we'll include a link to those as well. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know the recording is ready. We also push it out onto our various social media. You may notice I have links to our Encompass Live Facebook page. Um, what we do here's a reminder to watch today's show uh, we do a little meet the speaker and then we do um there we go here's the announcement for last week's when the recordings are available so if you do like to use facebook um, also on twitter we use the ncomp live hashtag um, so you can keep track of things there as well um, if you'd like to watch any of our other shows here you can see there is a search feature on our archives page so you can search for anything to see if we've um a show on a topic you're looking for information about. Um, you can limit it, you can do the entire show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you just want something very current. And that is because this is the full show archives for Encompass Live and I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because it's a huge page. <laughs> uh, going back to when the show first premiered which was January 2009. So we are in our uh, I think 15th year of the show and we do have our full show archives here. So Obviously, some things will become old, outdated, um, information may no longer be good. Some things will stand the test of time and be perfectly fine to watch. But just pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything. There's always the date on there that tells you when this show went was done live. 
And keep that in mind. Um, uh, as I said, some information will become old, outdated, in incorrect. Resources and services may have changed. Links might not work anymore. Uh, people might not work at the same library anymore <laughs> who presented for us. So um, just pay attention to that if you are watching any of our archive shows. So that'll wrap it today. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you so much, Eric. This is great. Um, and I hope you'll um, some of you will join us next week when our here's our upcoming shows. But next week's topic is tweens, programming, partnership, and burnout. Um, another guest speaker coming in from the Connecticut State Library, Kimberly Powell, will be joining us to talk about how to deal with um, pro doing programming for the tweens in your library. Uh, so if you are a teen tween librarian, that's a show for you. And um, check out any of our other coming shows. Some of these dates here, you'll see I'm probably filling in the May dates, so keep an eye on the calendar here. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, Eric. This is great. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. And uh, we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>